started, I'd like to invite up your Bob here. Bob Red. Oh, there's Bob. Bob is blending into the background. Chief Bob Redhawk Ruth and Coyote Acevedo for a welcoming. Judy. Yeah, I'm in the
welcome to the Swarthmore College. I'd like to introduce Vice President Maurice Eldridge. Love that kind of thing. 
Um, most of the materials that were available when I started to teach were, there wasn't a single one in the same dialect, even in just the Gnani dialect. And they were in the forms of dictionaries and scattered little bits of information here and there that weren't of any help to get people to speak. So when I started thinking about how can I develop a language program that will work for my people, what I decided to do was to put something together knowing these people. These are the faces of the people I look into every day who ask me how to say words. I know these personalities. These are our elder mothers in the tribe. I know these people. And I know sort of how they learn. And these are the people I don't have the heart to say transitive, inanimate, conjunct, subordinate clause to. <laughs> Although some of our young people are college graduates and do understand that, unfortunately, and can help us. And this is just a sampling of our community, but I'm trying to get a wide variety of our people spread it throughout the country. Some in Georgia, some in Oklahoma, most in Pennsylvania and New Jersey. And these are two of our younger children. One is named Taminit, after our chief, and Alankwa, during one of our language sessions with their hands up in the air. And I just thought that this was probably the most representative picture of all, of our people just really desiring their language back. And so it's an extremely emotional thing. In fact, I think you'll find this whole project is an extremely emotional thing for everyone working on it. Some people have been working on it for many, many years. So when I developed a curriculum for these uh, this is, I never imagined I would be standing here today. That's just beyond my, still beyond my thought. I was working with the uh, people in my community. So these were the objectives that I had in developing a conversational text. First of all, to present the language using a conversational way. So I went through and chose some conversations and talked to people. Well, what do you want to say? What, how do you want to be able to get around with the language? And so we chose conversations that they can use in everyday life um, that would make more sense than these isolated words in a dictionary. We provide little models and we don't, we avoid grammar. <laughs> we just give them, you know, the verbs and the words that they need to get along. And actually I do discuss grammar in this text, but I don't call it that. I say if you want to do this or say it this way, you just say it this way or add this little ending. Um, so providing models. I, provided a, I wanted to provide a holistic approach. So the conversational text deals not only with the little conversations, but also if there are you know, cultural things involved with that. So we have stories, for, for example, if the word of the day is crow, then there will be a story about the crow. And what we will do when we do the courses in our community is we bring the elders in to teach the culture surrounding the language so that everyone can be involved. And one of the reasons for doing that is because the kids learn it way faster than the elders, and it's embarrassing to them. You know, I mean, they pick the words up quicker. So if you bring everyone into the circle, which is our way anyway, and allow the elders to teach about the culture behind the language, then we find that we really have fun. And if you need to have fun, and also, the words aren't just words out there. They make sense, you know, and they teach you your culture and they, they are absorbed in your heart. So I have two, um, the, two, two versions of the conversations text. One is a lesson version, which I've given to some people. And the other one is an actual curriculum with a daily guide. Monday do this, Tuesday do this. Because most of the people that are trying to teach this language to their children are doing it in a homeschool way, parents. Um, and so this way, it is an actual daily guide, and it's based on the one word a day approach. So Monday, you learn a new number word. Tuesday, a new color word. And then to get them used to the animate and inanimate structure of the language, 
Wednesday you get a new animate word, Thursday you get a new inanimate word, and then all the way through there's review and review of the, and then the conversation is introduced on Monday, and then Tuesday that's reviewed and then this word is added. And, and it's, they're developed in three units of eight. So that then in lesson two, we'll use the language from lesson one and then add a little more. So say lesson one said, how do you say hello, cool, mousy, hutch. Lesson two, we'll repeat that and say, I'm fine, I'm sick, I'm okay. So it's built. Um, and um, so basically, that's, that's how I got started uh, developing this conversational program for the people that you just saw there and more in our community. The um, conversations that we included were greetings, answers to greetings, asking for things, uh, the colors, uh, a lot of weather terms, but in context. So if it we're teaching about a foggy day, then we have a mountain foggy day doing stuff, rainy day, snowy day, doing chores at the store. The familial terms are very important, and those are the terms our community has uh, retained to some degree. But then you get into possessives, and then you get into respect, and then that's a, that's a unit that really gives a lot of culture, the way um, you know, many Lenape people never even refer to other people at, at by their names. It's always by how they are related to another person, to an elder, to a younger sister, to a cousin, to a brother. Um, going fishing and going to school. So that's um, how we got started um, with the conversations in Lenape text. And for those of you, I did give uh, a copy of the, this out to some people earlier, some of my um, Lenape relations. And uh, the kind of boring thing about it was that I did put audio to it, but it was all me. So you've got these conversations between different people, all me. So what we started to do this semester is have my students from the Lenape language class uh, record the audio. So I'm going to see if I can kind of get this up and just give you a sample of one of the conversations. That's in the text, and this is about half. Hey, I'm we. Hi, get up. Cool, keep quietly. No, be quiet. Go away. I'm sleeping, go away. I'm we, no wonders. Get up, lazy one. Take me out, then. Let's go to the woods. Cool, Puniki. No, leave me alone. Nuikwila Okte. I'm tired and it's cold. Wendaka, Halapsi. Come on, hurry. Kupamaska Hutch? Are you walking? Cool, Ned Nam Gesapi. No, I ride horseback. We will ride together on the same horse. Uh, yeah. Don Kochi. Okay. I am cold. Mili shak queer kisi. Give me my coat, please. She you. Here it is. Atom. Let's go. Uh, bah. I'm coming. Tupan. There's frost. Ahita. Ok alami wine. Yes, and it's starting to snow. Shiki. It is beautiful. Ala. Stop. Kalista. Listen. Hmm, I wonder. That Kalamia touch now? Is that a hawk? Taktami, Kunayat. I don't know. Perhaps. Eh, Penal, Mushapani. Yes, look in the sky. Tani Hutch. Where? Ika. There. Awasaktene. Over the mountain. Kahela, Neo. Yes, indeed, I see him. Achonatam. Let's go to the mountain. Yuho. Okay. So that's a sample of one of the conversations about halfway through the text. 
um, of the conversations text. Text, which goes with 
um, the conversations text, basically what we did was put the grammar back in here for people who want to understand more of the language. So it, let's say that the, the words introduced were crow, then there would be a whole vocabulary lesson on all the verbs. Um, and then let's say the first lesson introduced, how are you doing, uh, are you well, pull them all, see hutch. In the advanced supplements, you'll see that conjugated in all its wonderful forms. Um, and then there will be a translation, a short translation using the language that they've learned so far in um, each of the units. And, um, and then there's a section with other words, all these ad uh, adverbs like tomorrow and today and around and through and those really useful words, um, nevertheless, words like that that you can use. Um, and those are introduced gradually so that they can start to take these bits of models of sentences that they have because right away they want to know how to do that, you know. Um, and so that was the thing I realized that was needed in addition to the conversational text, these adverbs and other words. So each unit contains, and they each go along with the units in a conversation text for those people that want more, uh, that don't want to wait all the way to lesson 24 to be able to count to 100. Um, so that, that's basically it. These are the students that were in my first Lenape language class. They're extremely bright students and they picked up on the language very quickly. They kept me on my toes and they asked me questions that took me years to research. And so I said, you're going to have to wait. You answer it. Uh, they really, they are very bright. They keep me very much on my toes. And, and really, what, now we've got an advanced uh, left, kids that have taken it the second year. We work together. You know, there are questions I need to find the answers to yet. And we're doing that together and it feels really good. But Elizabeth um, Bogle Albright was a senior last year. She took on the daunting task, which no one wants to go near, of developing a full verb dictionary. So what she did was took all of the verbs that we were working with in both the conversation text and the <coughs> supplements text, and there are many, many of them. And she developed a dictionary of verb conjugations. Intransitive, inanimate, intransitive, animate, uh, transitive, animate verbs, and I know there's only a few people know what I'm talking about, but you know what a daunting task that would be. And that's what people have been saying to me. Well, I can find this conjugate, how do you say, you know, we love them, but I can't find how to say I love him, or you, you can only find bits and pieces. And so she had to work really hard on uh, finding models where she could, you know, develop the endings. This is a conjugate, an animate, transitive animate conjugation of one verb. Just one, <laughs> with all its different conjugations. And in this dictionary, there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of verbs that she put together. Um, she's now at UMass and um, still very interested in continuing to work on Lenape language uh, resources with us. And we stay in touch. She's a busy girl. Um, Ellen also graduated last year, and she developed a children's book in Lenape, and this uh, involves a little snake going around to a bunch of different animals asking them what color he, they are, and then what color he is. So you get the different uh, verb, verb forms, I am, what color am I, what color are you, and also you learn your color words. And it's a really sweet book, and um, actually she's going to offer it for sale on our training post soon. We're working on getting it pub sort of published on our, web, on our training post. Um, Anne Marie, another senior who graduated last year, developed songs. So we have quite a few more songs that she developed, um, like sort of like the ones that I. This one is what is that? Where is Pumpkin? Where is Pumpkin? And then she has other things she substitutes there. Um, she has a number of games that everyone enjoyed playing. This one has to do with cooking. Um, the first child would say a phrase and then add an ingredient to the soup. And then each child had to remember that ingredient and add an ingredient in Lenape. So, um, there, and she has quite a few others here, but just to give you an idea, to actually sit down and play these games, I think really you really absorb the language more. And the adults, again, enjoy them just as much as the kids do. Miles is a senior this year. He, was more, he had more technical knowledge. He's actually devised a computer game. This is just an example of the test. You can take the study section or the test section, or um, and it gives you person words, number words, body parts, colors. He's still working on the graphics for this. I have to grab him before he graduates to make sure he completes this game so we can play it. 
on, but he was with us last semester and wasn't able to come back this semester. <clears throat> then we have Rachel. One thing that I, I'm not able to do and that some people have asked me for when I develop the conversations text is to put the phonetics in there for linguists or people who can follow those things. Most of my people say, I can't read that. And so we tried to put more of a way they could read how to pronounce it. But, you know, there, there are people who do want those phonetics in there. So Rachel took on the task of taking the dictionary. There's a dictionary at the end of each text and putting the phonetics in the conversations text. Naomi Glassman, not here today from my last class, she developed a dictionary to go with the advanced supplements text. So now we have a dictionary for both of those, and the two together have quite, quite a large um, amount of words. We have Zach uh, Wiener and um, Margaret, who are both here and are second year students this year. Their first year they developed a brochure so that you could walk down through Chrome Woods. Zach took the uh, plants. And um, Margaret was actually a biology major, stuck in with all of us, like those linguists, um, decided to take the animals that are inherent to the area. And so they developed a brochure and a trail to walk through the Crumb Woods with the Lenape names of the plants and the animals. And we're still working with Crumb Woods to get that published so that it's actually available for visitors to swap more and get a nature trail going through there. Uh, we're also considering a Lenape village. Haven't gotten that far yet. Julie uh, did additional exercises for the conversations text so that there would be more work with the conversation above and beyond what I put in there. And then Amira, um, is Mary, Mary here? Mary's yeah. here. Amira is our com class comedian and she's very wonderful with, um, which is great because it's a Lenape thing, Lenape humor. And are any of you aware of the bulbous Buffon skit? Um, <laughs> so my students said, you better play that first, or this is going to seem really silly. But because of time constraints, I'm not going to play the first one. Uh, but really, it's just sort of a silly skit. But deep, you know, un underneath all that, it's meant to just help people appreciate the language. It throws words out. And it's, it's meant, in and, and, and Amira's own words here, which I copied from her video, this video is meant to serve as a resource for students learning Lenape who want to something more amusing and less purely educational to watch so they can hear Lenape spoken and get into the groove of the language. It's adapted from an English sketch that was chosen for its wordplay and focus on the intrinsic beauty of some words and how they sound. I hope that this video will help raise awareness of the Lenape and its value as a unique and special language. And she also said in another part, you know, that this does not in any way portray the Lenape people. So, um, I thought it was good that she had it. Uh, but really, I think it's, it's, they have a lot of fun making this, so I'm going to show this to you guys. Let me see it. Um, I can find it. Sometimes my shortcuts don't come up.
Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the Vogelin, uh, who has collected uh, many, uh, who has collected language samples, um, and um, he. Uh, but most. Well, let me just read what uh, what I'm going to show you a sample of the language in a minute. But um, he recorded the language in phonetics for li that linguists could understand, and then had a free translation of many of our stories. So there's a lot of language there. Uh, but what Maureen did was she went through all the linguistics and she translated each word, which he didn't do. He just had a free translation so that we could enter all of these words into our dictionary. And then she also provided, um, just to give you an example of what a vocal text looks like a little bit. These are the stories. This is a story about a mermaid. And then you have the phonetics there, and then a free translation on the right. So what she did was she took each word, and she uh, spelled them according to the spelling conventions that we're using now with Unami dialect. And then she actually went through and analyzed each, uh, wait, that's not it, I'm sorry, each text sample. This is an example of, of basically what she did here. She took each word of all the stories, the free translation, and then the, the uh, analysis of how the verb works and the person form and, and all of that. And she did that with uh, many, many sentences in each story. We still have four or five vocal stories to keep doing this, and some of the other students are going to be taking on the task of doing that too. What's important is that we're collecting all this language and all these new words, and as we're doing that, we're entering it into the dictionary. So we're, we're collecting a phenomenal amount of words that were collected by these linguists. We're uh, transforming them into our modern spelling conventions, and we're adding them into our, our own dictionaries. We'll talk a little bit, that's actually a project and one of my students will talk a little bit more um, about that later. So the goal of this project, according to Maureen, that she was working on, is to make Lenape, I mean, Lenape's story more accessible and useful for language learners. The original text was written in linguistics ease, which is not always easy to read and may be a barrier for those without linguistic training. By rewriting the text according to current spelling conventions, it will be more easily readable, and the original text also only gave a general sentence translation, which is useful for understanding the overall meaning, but does not help to learn in, uh, individual words or constructions. My word-by-word -word glossing will hopefully be helpful for learning how structure, how to structure the words and the sentences, and indeed it is um, <coughs> important for our um, Okay, and then for the first intro class, for their finals, they were expected to write a story on their own in the language, and they wrote some really wonderful stories and tried to stick with elements of culture that they had learned. Uh, that we were able to discuss because we do try to incorporate some culture in the language classes. And so each of them wrote stories and then some of these stories became translations that we added to the text for the advance for the next year's class. And so we have all of these stories and then each of the words that they used, if they hadn't already been entered into the dictionary, they're getting entered into that dictionary. Our Lenape language study class uh, now we have advanced students and also intro students at the same time. Some of these students have come back, they're more articulate in the language, and uh, they were able to work on some more um, advanced projects. So in the, the second year class, the objectives for the advanced students uh, were to produce high quality audio files of conversations text so that you don't have to just listen to me anymore and you heard an example of those that they're working on. What we are also doing is we are developing an online resource uh, for all of these things that we're developing are going to go online. They're not for anyone's personal uh, gain. Um, they're for our people to learn the language and to make it available for them. And I've always done that and I will always do that. And all of our students have agreed that any of the hard work that they've done, they're willing to contribute uh, for free on the, online C, uh, on the online resource. We already have a, uh, a URL, and we're just in the process of beginning to uh, 
upload all of this information, the conversations, text, the advanced supplements, the dictionaries, the full verb dictionary, all that, the audio, the bulbous bouffants skit, and all of that is going to be uploaded on the website. We're in the process of doing that now. Uh, it will be attached to Swarthmore's college, but it will have its own URL. Uh, they had to complete 15 translations for homework of the collected language. So now I'm thinking I have to teach advanced students. What am I going to do with these kids? So what I did last summer was I spent the whole summer collecting all the language that exists anywhere that I could find or know of for them to work with. And so we collected uh, so samples of the language by and I tried to stick with Unami because that's what we're doing, although there's some Muncie uh, mixed up in there. So, uh, we're from Richard Adams, Robert Adams, uh, Big White Owl, Jasper Hill, actually that's Muncie dialect, so we're having <coughs> trouble with that. We sure could use Glenn in our class. We gave up on some of it. Um, uh, but the rest is pretty much Unami. I have a lot of language in the Lenape Nation archives where we have recorded our elders, and uh, we have ceremonies in the language, naming ceremonies. Um, so what we're doing is we're taking all of this and we are transforming it to modern spelling conventions and we're adding it to our, our group of, our, of literature that we have collected. The third book, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but the third book that we do is going to be a Lenape literature text. And that's going to include all of the Bowman samples, all of the stories. Um, so I, I guess many of you are all already familiar with uh, Speck. Um, and, uh, but Frank Speck, just, this is just an example of, of one of these sources that we're working with. Lived with the Lenape people um, in Oklahoma. And um, he was a really pretty amazing guy. Uh, he did a lot of work in languages with the Cherokee and then later on a lot with the Iroquois, but he would move, he'd move in with the people and he was accepted by them. He would collect their language and because of him we have quite a bit of language. There are two books in Lenape in the Unami dialect. One, ceremonies, feasts, and songs and dances. Uh, our, our students went through and completed that whole text, everything in that text, and, and I'll show, I'll give you an example. Um, and then he's got another book that's, the whole book is just the big house ceremony, and everything that goes through with that. Uh, how many of you are familiar with that? <coughs> okay, so you know what I'm talking about. So, um, just to give you an example of what um, one of our students is working on, this is an example of what a spec uh, manuscript looks like. So um, we're talking turn of the century here. So you've got the linguistics there, the phonetics, and then underneath he's got uh, literal translations of the words, but we're finding that they're not necessarily always exactly the literal translations that we're familiar with at all. Um, so, although he tried to collect, you know, somewhere in the translation, some things got lost. But what we can do is look at the language and we can um, see how it was told to him. And one thing that is really helpful with this is that there are many, many complex senses. So you've got use of conjunct forms, you've got use of uh, subordinate forms. Everybody tune out except the linguistics people now. And you've got uh, many, many more examples of how they did put complex sentences together, which for us is invaluable. Um, so we can study this. And uh, as I said, we have a whole book of spec that we completed this semester. And also there are a lot of interesting things that we're learning about the culture as it was taught to him by this you know, particular group of Lenape people. And it's fascinating. Um, but each of these words you see here, and there are yeah, how many spec stories we did. They're all fairly large. About 12 or 13, each of you did about three, maybe more, maybe 15. Every word in here is now entered into the dictionary too, so we've collected more and more language. And as I said, the most, uh, the important thing about it for us was, oh, look how he uses this conjunct phrase, or look how he's putting these adverbs in. Or, uh, so it's been real instructive in that way. Um, then uh, this is an example of J Julie took her the spec that you just saw, and um, now it looks like this. She went through and took each of the words. Again, she converted them to our modern spelling conventions, and then put the literal uh, 
transcription of each word and what it means, and then of course they're being entered into the dictionary. Um, so there, I have a couple of other things to show you, but I think you've got the idea. That's enough on that one. Then um, they, what they also had to do was Bob Redhawk told us, tells us constantly, tells us wonderful stories. I recorded the stories in English. And the advanced students had to take those stories and write them in Lenape. And anyone who speaks Lenape knows that you can't trans you, you have to think Lenape to get the spirit of a story that an elder is telling in English into Lenape. So it, it's really not the easiest thing to do. Um, so these this was were their unit tests. They each had to take three of Bob's stories and uh, write them in Lenape. And so I do have an example of, just to show you one of those, uh, this is Zach's uh, story of the mountain goats that Bob told, which I haven't been able to get to, to him because our computers aren't compatible. Um, this is this story in, uh, you know, free, free verse. And then what Zach had to do was try to put that away that you can put it in the Lenape language, still getting the importance of the story out. And um, again, each of the words are translated literally underneath so that our person that's working on the dictionary can just take the words, take the literal translation, and um, put them into the dictionary. Uh, the other thing that the advanced students then had to do is they each taught a level one class. And um, they did a good job with that. They had the expertise to, uh, to teach a class to the intro kids. And um, then what I did was I gave them each a verb to work on. So one would have conjunct forms, one had how to do negatives properly, one had subjunctive. I mean, and, well, there's subjunctive, which it uses conjunct, but it's a little different. So they each had, uh, Zach had negatives. Did I miss anybody? Supporting clauses. And Julie. <laughs> Subordinate clauses. <laughs> so I said, okay, you check out subordinates. You collect all the words you can collect, uh, analyze them, look at them, and come up with some spelling rules for us. Because we'd like to just add this ending, you know, for conjunct or sub subordinate. But really, you know, a Lenape has a lot of idiosyncrasies, and there aren't always very clear rules to follow. And this is probably the most painstaking work that they've had to do, and I've gotten the most complaints about it. In fact, if you look at a specific little email between Zach and Julie, she'll, you'll see her having written, I hate Zach. <laughs> they're going through there trying to. So it's, it's, but they each have ended the semester with, I mean, there's a lot of work to be done yet, but they each have begun, maybe just having taken in transitive <clears throat> verbs and saying, oh, this is how they're formed, here are the exceptions, if it ends in I, add this ending, if it ends in X, add this ending, this one doesn't follow the rule at all. And it's only a beginning. I mean, this is this is a project that will be going on forever. <laughs> um, for their finals, both introductory students and advanced students have to write a story. I'm still waiting to get those. And as I said, then uh, what we are beginning to do, the advanced students, is collect all this language that we are working on, and we want to put together a Lenape literature text with everything that can be collected, so that you know anyone can just pick it up and read these read Bob Redhawk's stories. I'm including the stories of my students. Everyone who tells stories will be credited. I'd also like to open it up to anyone else who wants to include the Muncie dialect. I think this would be a great collaborative thing. I, I said to Bob, when I first came here, I'm an English person, and I love to write poetry, and I love to write music. My first love of the language said, this is a wonderful literary language. And at that time, people were saying, Oh, you know, it's going to die out. It's, it's, you know, you can't use this to write poetry. Uh, I won't bore you with my poetry. Um, but I've written quite a bit of poetry, and I think many of our people want to begin to express themselves in the language again. And I think Lenape has incredible potential as a literary language on the shelves next to Shakespeare and, um, who wrote other years of solitude? Thank you, Garcia. I think we belong here. And I, I believe that someday we can do that. So that's where we're headed. Uh, we're, we're working on that, and so we're including, and also want to include any Lenape anywhere in this. It would be, wouldn't it be nice to be able to pick up a Lenape literature text? 
have it all there. And a dictionary in the back. A full rotation. So, boy, I wish I had that when I started out. Having to get bits and scratches from 60 different dialects and try to figure out what that heck. And how are they spelling it in this one? Um, okay, so we're winding down now. Um, now what I'd like to do is introduce you to the students in my current class, who I believe are all here, and let you know what they're doing. I'm going to go, as, as I said, we had a dual class this time, intro students and advanced students. Miriam is here. Miriam, would you like to tell people what you've been working on as your project for this semester? Hi. is necessary. 
necessary language. And so these word games that the kids are working on with the vocabulary, and they have, get, they have a vocabulary test of 20 Malawi words each day. Um, this gives them, you know, a lot more repetition and work with the vocab, both the other words, the adjectives, and the, you know, the, the words that go along. Julie, you want to talk about what you're doing?
because the most important thing again is getting it into the community, teaching language in the community, cooperating with other revitalization efforts. So, uh, yeah, I'm Zach. Um, <clears throat> I was taking this semester a course called Literacies and Social Identities, and that was um, work. Um, that was in my, I'm, I'm an education and linguistics major, so, um, come on. Uh, so this video should be working. <coughs>